before the team can study sand tiger sharks, they have to catch them. For an animal that grows up to 10 feet long and can weigh 350 pounds, that requires a lot of muscle and a lot of bait. We are about five miles uh, offshore at Bowers Beach in the middle of Delaware Bay. We're out here uh, implanting transmitters and conducting a tagging study on sand tiger sharks. Students help Fox lower baited hooks into the bay, then an hour and a half later pull in the lines. They are trying to determine if the population is rebounding from overfishing and accidental catches in the 1980s and 90s. It is the largest commonly occurring shark in the bay, so it, it serves that sort of apex predator role. You can think about it as being the, the, the lions of the Serengeti. Well, in Delaware Bay, you've got sand tiger sharks, so they are essentially ruling the roost. And we know almost nothing about sand tigers in Delaware Bay. The team records the sex and length of the shark, then does minor surgery to implant acoustic transmitters. The transmitters send signals to hundreds of underwater receivers sunk in the Delaware Bay and up and down the eastern seaboard. Researchers can download the data from these receivers to study population trends and migration patterns. It appears at this point in time, there are roughly one, two, three, four, five, six, 15, 16, 17, 18 uh, tagged what I believe are all sand tigers right in this general area in the last day. Sand tiger sharks are so-called apex predators at the top of the food chain, so a drastic decline would wreak havoc on the ecosystem in the bay. Knowing when they're here and when they're not here, we can work with agencies like the Army Corps of Engineers and, and the state agencies to allow activities like dredging and beach renourishment. If we know sand tigers are in a given location at a given time of the year, maybe it's not the best thing to go in there and dredge that area. Fox has been implanting these transmitters since 2006, but this kind only tracks sharks when they are close to the coast. This season, the team is also expanding its tracking efforts. They are equipping some sharks with both transmitters and receivers, so researchers will be able to detect which animals they might great with. You can tell a lot by a person by where they go and who they're friends with. Um, and that's exactly what we're trying to do here. Oliver is also launching an autonomous underwater vehicle to troll the bottom of the ocean for two one-month stints. The glider will monitor sharks farther off into sea. Along with listening for sharks, it's equipped with scientific sensors that tell us about the temperature of the water, the salinity of the water, how uh, turbid the water is, what color the water is, how much oxygen is in the water. Once we can figure out where the sharks like to live, we can then take that idea and basically broadcast it up and down the East Coast to produce a model that would say, this is our prediction for where sand tiger sharks ought to be.